Yeah, I'm here back with more. Uh, oh, I meant to. Forbidden West. Uh, yeah. This door works. We uh, just got to the gene lock door. Let's see how this goes. So yeah, this is where Farzinus shows up, right? It's like we get the copy of Gaia, right? And Farzinus shows up, and then we get the... Yeah, because then we have the fight with Eric. That thing is huge. Yeah. It looks like the power's off, except for that console. It's damp in here, too. I hope the water hasn't corroded anything. Genetic profile confirmed. Okay. Greetings, Dr. Sobek. Do you wish to activate Recluse Spider? I do. Activating. Hey, bring it up. No, it doesn't sound good. It appears to be unstable and very heavy. Be careful. Well, at least I've got power. And there's data here. Looks like this recluse spider thing is a testing apparatus for Gaia and Hades. I'd better take a look at that excess panel. Yes, get to it. Okay. This is going to be an interesting scene to revisit now. Okay. I think those circular pods are repositories. One loaded with Hades backups, the other with Gaia. What are you waiting for? Hades is down, but the Gaia repository is stuck. So unstick it. Detach the cable from the arms coupling. Shut. Maybe I can shoot the coupling on the arm. It's not exactly steel. Yeah, well, now that it's down, I should be able to access. Right. Got one. Two, in fact. This will probably be final episode for today. It's already one o'clock, starting to get a bit tired. Maybe I'll do one more. Maybe. It's not a full backup. No. More like a seed from which Gaia's mind could grow if it had subfunctions with which to form a heuristic matrix. So it's useless? I'm afraid so. Without subfunctions. Aloy, you've done all you could. For what? Nothing? Maybe saving the world is too big a task for any one person. Wait, wait, wait. It's useless without subfunctions, but there are subfunctions out there. The original ones. Scattered to the winds when Guy blew herself up. They could be anywhere. You can't find them in time. Even if you did, the mysterious signal mutated them just like yours. You have no idea. I do. West of Plain Zone. Close enough for me to go get it. I was hoping to find all the sub functions, but that's enough to get started, right? It is. Recover Minerva. One could use it to launch Gaia's heuristic matrix. And when she's conscious, she helps me find the other sub functions. I go gather them. And rebuild her piece by piece. Very clever. Still think I can't save the world on my own? Friends of yours? No. They don't know me. 
The data Pulse I transmitted indicated that a Gaia backup could be recovered here was anonymous. Now, they're very powerful, but they won't harm you. Not when they see who you are, what you are. A clone of Elizabeth Sobek, a genetic key with which they can reboot Gaia and rebuild the system. They need it. I warned you, Simons. For once, Eloy, submit to the inevitable. Open the hatch. First I rebuild Gaia, save life on Earth, then I track you down and end yours! I'm trying to help you here. Focus, spyware free. Okay. Think. Think, think, think. I don't care how powerful they are, the only thing that can open that hatch is me. What a surreal moment this is. Looks promising. Beta. Have it? Fantastic. Did the pulse originate here? Has someone... Something wrong? Any idea what the hell a clone of Elizabeth Sobek is doing here? Maybe Gaia made one when it destroyed itself a Hail Mary to repair the system. Mm -hmm. Don't like the sound of that. Nah, don't like it. Don't want it. But the if it Nope. One's enough trouble. Eric. Yeah. Care to do a little downsizing? Hmm. Sure. What if she sent the pulse? Then that was foolish of her. But we got who we came for. She said Tilda does defend her. Let's see. I snap a lot of necks in VR. <laughs> but that certain tremor as life fades from the eyes. Ooh! No hollow quite gets it. Keep flapping your mouth. It makes a nice target. You actually think that primitive crap you got there can hurt me? This is gonna be fun. <laughs> Uh, taking some notes. All right. Um, I, I think I'm gonna continue listening to my video. Revenge and ready to go. Joel and moving forward. It really leaves nothing really on the table. It really feels like Ellie doesn't really have much left to tell. Feel like her story is complete and real significant way. But also, it doesn't really feel like there's any reason to move on from it. It doesn't feel like there's any reason to have the last of part three. Because I feel like the connection between the last of part one and two aren't really gonna be there. I mean, I, I feel like her story arc with Abby is done. I feel like her story arc with Joel is done. I, I don't feel like there's much to move on from at this point. And I mean, that's what I didn't talk about. Is the final moment with Joel, the final cutscene, final flashback where we do see Ellie tell Joel that she's gonna try to forgive him, and that's really the last time that they talk. And I said there's no real full reconciliation there. I mean, they're still on very rocky terms. Yeah. And it's really through his death that I do think she finds regret in not forgiving him earlier. Like, I, I feel like for me, in terms of the Joel and 
the storyline. I feel like this game did everything I wanted it to do. I feel like the problem for me is that it added a game to the storyline, which is a storyline that is so based on it as a whole. Not necessarily because the storyline is bad, but more so because it doesn't really fit in with the rest of the narrative as seamlessly. And so overall, like the last of us part two, I adored this game. I think it is a fantastic game for game design. I think it tells a fascinating story on a story on a scale that we've rarely seen games. I think really is something else I can get to. I can't think of a video game story that is at this level of scale. I mean, I'll be jumping back and forth between characters, between time periods, between everything like that. This game is incredible in its approach to storytelling. And I don't dislike the story that was told here. The biggest issue for me here is that it is a continuation of the original last of us. And I feel like as a continuation of the last of us, it succeeds in many elements. Also, I don't see the on others. I feel like, like I think Joel Hill's stuff is really great. I think Abby, being the daughter of the surgeon, is really great. I think Joel Hill's come up and score the event at the end of the last game. I really great. I think overall, this narrative didn't feel as focused as the story. That is a very great narrative. Well, the last part two here is way more ambitious with what it tries to do narratively, and point just comes off as a little bit I don't feel like it has as solid of the narrative structure as it had originally. That said, I 100% not agree with a lot of hate that the game is getting. I do think that a lot of the narrative choices that were made throughout the game were justified, though I do feel like certain things could have been executed better. I do think the ending of my opinion is probably the weakest element of the entire game. I think it's the one part of the game that I truly feel like easily could have been better. Despite its flaws, I still look at this game as one of the best games I've ever played, and I do still think The Last of Us as a whole has one of the best narratives I've ever seen. I mean, I think there are going to be really big moments from this game that will forever stick in my mind. There's so many With that, also what I want to do is listen to my actual Last of Us Part Two retrospective. That was the one year later. There's. All right, guys, BLM here, back with a new video, and in this video. For the one year anniversary of one of the most controversial games in recent history, especially from a narrative standpoint, I'm going to be talking about The Last of Us Part 2. This has been on my YouTube for a while now, a really in-depth look at the game. I was like to do a spoiler review when the game came out, and I did talk about the game again when I did a PS4 exclusive ranking, which spoiler is going to be number one. But I never really had the opportunity to talk very in-depth about the game, so we're going to do that here. Now that this time has passed since the game's short release, I didn't know you have to change over time. Now, I was a massive fan of short release. Wrecking that thing ain't gonna help, girl. Come on, come at me. Oh, is there more to this? Fuck, this goes on for a while, doesn't it? Um. Perfect song, it's only gonna kill you. That's 
I'm letting you have all the fun. What was that? Me killing what you wanted dead. What the hell did you think? The platform collapsed, body went with it. Right. And since when don't you get what you want, huh? Spectres, search. There's a current. Is it heading for an exit? Alright. Oh, Nelly. And it's really beautiful to want to hear my twin finger as well. But through this scene, we still see the awkwardness between the two characters that stems from Joel's actions at the end of the previous game that do obviously play a major factor within the main storyline of the game. Now, after that cutscene, we do skip four years and start playing as Ellie right before she leaves to go on patrol. And the waking up chapter here introduces us to two of the new main characters in Ellie's storyline in Jesse and Dina. You first meet Jesse, who is a fine character. I, mean, I do feel like his dialogue is well written, he's well acted. He's a likable character, but he hasn't really given much to do outside of just adding some awkwardness to Ellie and Dina's relationship and being a companion during certain chapters of the game. Now, most of the gameplay in this chapter revolves around following Jesse around the town. And we eventually meet up with Maria to find out our orders. And there's a decent amount of exposition about Ellie's relationships with both Jesse and Dina. But we also do learn about the dance that happened the previous night, which is a cutscene that we had seen already in a previous E3. And I do question why the game takes so long to include that scene within the main game itself. As it isn't shown to the player until the end of the farm chapter. Which I get its narrative significance there in the fact that it's obviously still showing the guilt that Ellie has over her relation with Joel. But you still find the placement of it kind of strange. And really, that's one of the bigger complaints about this game as well is the structuring of the narrative. In particular, the placement of the flashbacks throughout the game. I don't really agree with most of the complaints. I do feel like most of the flashbacks in the game are interspaced at times that do make sense. However, I do feel like this is the one that feels kind of off me, not within the actual course of the narrative, but more so from the concept that we've already seen the scene. So for them to be hiding the scene until later in the game just feels kind of weird. Either way, during this section, we do learn about the awkwardness between Joel and Ellie. And from the way this chapter portrays their relationship, it does feel like they are already repairing their relationship. Though we do obviously learn later that they never actually got the chance for this, which really just makes all the entire events of Jackson just really tragic. We do then meet Dina in the game, who is Ellie's love interest, and I do like her relationship with Ellie. I do find some of the answer to the game for Dina points, but for the most part, I think the relationship is well written, despite Dina's character becoming kind of irrelevant after Seattle Day 1. Now there's a weird section where we have a snowball fight with some kids for some reason, but after that we do end up leaving Jackson on patrol, and that's when we transition to the Overlook chapter, which forces us to play as Abby for the first time. Which I remember the first time I played the game, it did feel kind of jarring, especially because obviously you come into this game thinking you're going to get a game pretty much solely with Ellie, and then we get the revelation that there is this other playable character, especially in a story that is held with such high regard in The Last of Us. Obviously, there is always going to be some hesitation there, and obviously what they do with Abby's character later did obviously cause a lot of controversy, but through this Abby section, we do get introduced to Owen, who I find a strange character. I mean, I think he is someone that is probably one of the more developed characters out of Abby's group, and if you were to, like, really force me to, like, rank all of Abby's friends, I mean, I guess I would put Owen at number one, but it's like, that's not really saying much. Like, I don't know, something about Owen never really clicked for me. Like, he's not a bad character, he's not poorly written, it's just something about him just always made him feel to me like a plot device for Abby, instead of an actual, like, compelling character. And there's, we do get tutorials to some of the new mechanics within the game, like dodging and proning, which dodging I don't feel works. Nearly as well as I would like, I think that was one of my favorite complaints for the last part one in terms of this combat system, the fact that you can't dodge attacks in through that, you know, get surrounded. But here with this game, I do feel like dodging feels unresponsive at points. There's points where I'm pushing dodge and she doesn't do it until a few seconds later, and that can get kind of annoying. Proning, though, I actually really enjoy. I think proning was a nice addition to the game, really helps out with the stealth. But outside the tutorials and the introduction to Abby and Owen, this chapter doesn't really do much narratively. Despite being like a 10 to 15 minute chapter, it really could have been finished within that one cutscene of Abby and Owen finding Jackson. After that, we do cut back to Ellie and Dina, and we have a pretty long section of Ellie's controls. And there's really going to get more tutorials, specifically with the crafting system and throwing models and bricks, and we need to clear out some areas of affected, and the business process to get more of the relationship between Ellie and Dina, and this is also the foundation around their romantic relationship, which we see progressive later down the road. Now, this section comes back to Abby in the awarded chapter where she's running away from the porch. And this is where the narrative really starts to get serious, and this is the chapter where Abby gets saved by Joel and Tommy. It was nice to see these characters for the first time after times could hear as I remember when I was first playing the game, I was really just waiting to see how Joel carries the story here, and I just need to add some irony here that Joel ends up saving the person that actually ends up joining him. While running away from the fact that we have the scene where Tommy introduces the duo to Abby, and after learning Joel's name, you clearly see Abby looking shocked, and it's at that point where I remember knowing exactly what was going to happen. So Abby ends up taking Joel and Tommy back to her friends, and this scene is so intense. The music that's played here puts this scene, the way that everyone's faces just get super serious at the moment where Joel announces his name, gives this scene a really great sense of dread. And obviously we get that Abby reveal where she reveals she has a vendetta against Joel and begins to torture him. And in the next chapter, Ellie ends up catching up to them, where we do have Joel dies. Now, obviously there was a lot of controversy when this game came out about Joel dying so early on and certain things around it. Considering how Joel got himself down to the game, he was saying that Joel went left, he ran up to the game without testing the person. Like, I get that sentiment, but I feel like there's enough there. First off, the content is broke, and Abby, once Joel gets more reserved right off the bat, plus also in the years of Joel living in a relatively peaceful society, I'm sure he gets softened to some degree as well, but I understand the complaints about it. Also get the complaints that Joel was killed off too early, as again, it does suck that we miss out on having a lot more of the Joel and Ellie interactions within the game.
Ooh, look at that shot. Beautiful shot. That's some symbolism. Shh. It's okay. I'm here. I've, I've got it. He's like Ross, essentially. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll talk about. I, I really want. I, like I, the reason why I'm listening to these Last of Us Part Two right videos is because, like, I feel like that's the way I'm gonna have to approach this. Where, like, I, I simply don't have the time to make this like fully in depth retrospective of the, or like re, like full blown analysis of this game like I did the last was part 2 uh with my my one year later but I really really want to <laughs> um I think I might just say fuck it and do it next year do both those horizon ones we'll see I'm not gonna lock it in just yet. I haven't even looked at the schedule to see if that's even plausible. Yeah. Kept muttering it while I carried you. Look, Aloy, whatever it is that you found, you're in no shape. I will crawl if I have to. Okay, fine. But before you do that, there's someone you should talk to. A Nutaru named Zo. And she told me there's been trouble in those mountains. A cave spitting out deadly machines. Can't be a coincidence, right? But why do we need her? Let's head for the cave. It's in Utaru territory. Her territory. She can help us. You'll see. Fine. Let's go see this marvelous so then. As Vodin blooms with her. Roots rot in snow Still the seed rises As certain as stone So? She should be in bed Aloy doesn't really do should You're so right we're all said I should talk to you about the machines in the mountains west of Plainsong. I am a grave singer. And my place is here. We can talk once you've healed. What's wrong with it? Her. The name is Ray, not it. She's one of our land gods. And she's dying. But not just dying. She's suffering. Her condition is not your concern. So, if anyone can help, it's Aloy. <laughs> May I? Mm. to do might look bad but it will help spear West of Plainsong. There are trouble out there? The Utaru have trouble everywhere. Our fields blighted, our settlements abandoned. But the cave in the mountains is the worst of it. It is a sacred place. Fa, 
another of our land gods, went inside weeks ago, but she hasn't emerged. Killer machines pour out instead, threatening to overwhelm us. It's never happened before. Wouldn't be your first sacred cave. Something inside there. Something that could solve problems all over the world. The storms, the derangement. <laughs> Maybe even your broken land gods. What could possibly do all that? A spirit? Yeah. Something like that. I could journey back to Plainsong. Assemble the chorus. Tell how you soothed Ray. Ask their permission to go inside. Great. I'll get my things. She needs rest. You don't have to tell me. I'm fine. Oh, yeah, I can't. I can't. Like, I'm taking too many notes right now. Like, there's no fucking way I'm talking about all this shit. There's so much to talk about. Like, within this, even just this one scene. Uh. Bed rest. And this, like, setting up of Zozark, the setting up of, um, a I mean, the more of, like, Aloy and... She does not need you to help her heal. You could come with me to play in song. Lend your voice to mine as I try to persuade the chorus. It might help her cause. I'd like to. But I'm afraid she might run off. Really? Very well. Later then. So, wait. It's not uh, that I don't want to go with you. It's just that I... I don't get her reaction there. Like, is she disappointed? What is she? Is that what you were trying to say? Um. Yes. Then I look forward to more conversation. Uh. Yeah. Me too. You're supposed to be resting. Laurel, you should go with her. I'll get better on my own. You trying to get rid of me so you can... I think I might do one more episode. Just because I feel like I should get to... Um, to the base. I don't know, though. There is, like, a weird ending to that mission, isn't there? So maybe I can't even do it even if I wanted to. Wait! <laughs> I have way too many notes here just for this one fucking mission. Okay. Well, yeah. oh, I'm level eight. It's got funny too. Um Also, 
the desperation coming from Ashley Johnson's performance is masterfully acted. And also in retrospect, I'm now knowing where Joel and Ellie left their relationship the previous night. The scene is even more tragic, but also heartwarming at the same time. And tragic in the sense that Joel and Ellie never really got the full premiere of their relationship before his death. And at the guilt from that and the striking of Ellie's character moving forward. Also heartwarming in the sense that the last thing that Joel sees is Ellie crying out in desperation for Joel to get up. Essentially a final confirmation that Ellie does still care for him after all the things he's done. And in retrospect, I feel so much more content with this being the ending for Joel's character. I genuinely got emotional when recording this. Uh, section of the review like talking about like the way that joel and ellie's relationship ends uh really did uh hit me because i really do fucking love it yeah we're done um i don't know like should i go one more like i feel like i can do it I just don't know, um... Oh, fuck it, let's do it, let's do it. So, for now, thank you for watching.